All right, guys, let's make our way to the left side of the bodies and let's right click on the canister and isolate it. And let's toggle back on that canvas reference so we can see what we're doing. Now, this video is going to get pretty hefty, guys, so try to stay with me as close as you can. It gets a bit crazy. So let's create a sketch and select a 2D background. And we are going to go to the line tool so we can kind of outline this grayed out section on the canister. So we're just following the reference. Up, down, side to side. Let's go down. And now we can right click, hit OK, and go to Finish Sketch. Now I want to split this body, so let's go to Modify Split Body. Select the canister, and for the splitting tool, let's select that line we just created. And let's hit OK. Now we can select this surface, right click, and go to Press Pull, and we can just offset this slightly to give it some depth. And once that's done, hit OK. Now what I like to do is uh, go to Create Sketch, select the 2D background. And let's use the two point rectangle. And let's just create a nice little rectangular shape here. Doesn't really matter what size. And we'll double click it and go to move. And let's just rotate this so it lines up a bit better with this rectangular silhouette on the reference. Let's move this. We can right click it OK. And we can just pull this down to uh, even this out a bit more. And we could even add fillets if we want to do that right now. So let's just, uh, yeah, we'll add the fillets right now. Why not? We'll just select all four of these corners. And we can right click it OK. And we can left click and hold and select profile. And we can right click, press pull this. That's one way of doing this. And there's other ways, but I'll just do it this way just to show you guys multiple ways of doing this. And let's just bring it out a bit, change from cut to new body. And we can go to the left side of the body, right click and go to move. And we'll just rotate around so we can grab this arrow here. And we can just pull this outward so it uh, actually collides with this main body here. Make sure it intersects. That looks pretty good right here. So let's hit OK. Now what I want to do is uh, I can right click on the body and isolate it or I can just toggle off the canister body so I can see the opposite side. And I think I'll do that. Now we'll rotate around, select this surface and let's just create a sketch. And I could use the circle down with the circle tool right here and start doing this but instead I'll just use uh, this fillet or offset and I'll just offset this. Then once I'm satisfied, I'll right click, hit OK, and I'll just press pull this. And I'm going to press pull this uh, outward so I can have this nice little uh, this nice little rectangular shape. Now we can select that surface and create a sketch. Now we can use our circle diameter circle to match these reference. And I'll just select this and Control C, Control V to duplicate that, and I'll just drag that copied version onto the duplicate on the reference. Now we'll just press pull both of these outwards at the same time and we'll uh, leave the operation on join. Now if we want to we can hit F to fill it that to give it more uh, a bit more details so we'll do that. And remember the hotkey for fill it is F on the keyboard. So if you don't see me go up to the top that's what I'm pressing. Just pressing F and then I'm Selecting what I want. Now I can toggle back on that canister. And really quick, one thing I can do is go to create pattern, circular pattern, change the pattern type from faces to bodies, select that rectangular body we just created. And for the axes, it can be any one of these rings on the body. And let's change the, we change the amount to something like six maybe yeah that'll give me an uh, even number all around and that actually matches pretty good so let's hit OK to now we can combine this so select this body this half of the body now we'll just select the rest of the mini bodies now we have bullying those shapes out of the canisters uh, bottom half now let's go to create pipe select this edge and we can change the size of it as we see fit. 
to match the reference. Now we have a new body. Now we can go to move and we'll just move this. And actually a good way to move this really quickly guys, if you see uh, set pivot here on the right side, we can select that. Now choose the center area here and let's unlock the pivot again so we can move it on this axis. If that makes any sense. So you guys can rewind it back if you need to. Now we can go to combine. Let's just combine this to get that nice little cutout shape. And that looks pretty dang good, guys. So let's go to create pipe. And let's create a pipe at the top area. Just like we did at the bottom. We'll just make this a little bit bigger. Change it to new body. Hit OK. And let's right click on the layer and go to move. And we'll choose this set pivot and we'll choose this center area here and we'll uncheck set pivot. Now we can move it on this axis. And we're just gonna finalize this by hitting OK. Then we're gonna go to combine, select this half of the body and this, and we'll cut that off. Now let's just combine these two together again so we have one big body. That looks good. Now we can right click and unisolate this canister to see the rest of the bodies. Now let's create another sketch on the 2D background and let's start getting some of this detail on the canister. So let's use a two point rectangle here and let's get a basic rectangular shape and we're gonna double click to select the entire sketch here and we'll just move this. We'll just slide um, some of these lines over to better match the reference. Let's drag this up a bit higher. Right about there, that looks good. And I do want to fill it all of these sharp corners, round these off a bit. That looks great. Let's right click it, OK, to finalize that. And just to test drive this, we'll just finish sketch. Let's go to Create, Emboss. Select our profile. And then for the faces, we'll select this rounded surface. And let's just rotate around so we can actually see what we're doing. We can grab this little white arrow here in the front and we can just control how far out or in this goes. You know, if it's out, it's actually extruding so there's no negative, but if you bring it in, it turns red so you know that there's going to be a cut. And that's it, okay. And that looks really good. Now let's go back to the front view. And there's something that we can do to further adjust this. Like you see, there's uh, we we'll actually have a little bit of distortion. So we can just select this interface here, this inner surface, and we can right click and press pull and we can just extend the length on this. And this is a powerful tool, guys. Now back in the front view, let's create a sketch on the 2D background. Now what I like to do is create another rectangular shape right here. Double click it and let's move this. We're gonna get this little cutout shape. Now this is where it gets a bit difficult because like I'm basically eyeing everything. So uh, here's where your skills come into play. So I'm trying to line this up with the reference. Adjusting these lines. And I will have to go and round these off. So let's hit fill it. And let's select all four of these corners. That's good. Let's right click it. Okay. Now let's finish sketch. We're going to create, emboss, and let's select our profile. Now let's select our rounded surface. Which will be this area here. And like we see, all we have to do is just adjust this arrow and let's bring it down a bit deeper than the last offset we did there. This has to be deeper because it's gonna like house another body on top of the surface. So let's hit okay to complete that. Now what I wanna do is uh, right click on that previous uh, movement that I made and I wanna just rotate this a bit so it looks uh, a bit closer to the reference. So I'm just making slight movements and now it updated as well. And that's a powerful thing inside of Fusion 360 to be able to go back on the timeline and just edit a feature. Now I want to create this little house here. So I'll just create a sketch on the 2D background. Now 
Now let's use our two point rectangle. We'll just create a giant rectangle. That's fine here. And let's switch over to the line tool to better capitalize this form. So we'll just draw a diagonal line here. That looks good. And we can trim off these lines that we don't need. Or I could have just pressed pull and just ignored it, but you know. Now we can press pull this profile. And I just want to press pull it by a little bit. Because this is going to fit inside that uh, cutout of that rectangular rounded surface we just created. Now we're going to right click on the body layer and let's just move this. We're just going to better position this. But actually, let's pull this out so we can just press pull this face and make it a lot thinner. That's too wide to fit inside this casing. Now we can right click back on the layer and we'll uh, better position this. We'll just turn this uh, sideways and just keep angling it so it fits inside this cutout shape. And now let's uh, select this flat surface on top and press pull this to make it a bit more flat and give it more space. And let's hit OK. And now we can choose this side face here and uh, create a sketch. Because on the reference I see a, a little ball joint. So we're going to use the circle diameter circle here and just create a little uh, rotating valve somewhere around here. And we can uh, you know, select this and move it to better position this. So where it actually makes a bit more sense. And the good thing about Fusion is nothing is set in stone. So we can always adjust this later on if need be. So we're going to just press pull this. And I want this to exceed beyond uh, the body that's uh, going over it. And let's change it from one side to two sides so I can actually extend the original surface as well. And this adds to the complexity. Ensure it's on new body and let's hit OK. And this looks pretty good. Let's select this surface. And we can just uh, press pull this, or we can do a draft. Whatever one uh, feels better. Or we can even do both. This is really up to our interpretation. So let's go to modify, and we can go to draft. Let's select this face and this face secondly, and we can just, just slightly adjust that. Now let's hit F to enter fillet mode, and we'll select these two edges at the bottom, and we'll just round these off a bit. Let's hit OK. Now we can utilize Fusion's timeline and we'll just dial back at the bottom right. We'll just dial back one before we did that fillet. And we're going to press F to enter fillet and we're going to fillet this top edge here. And this is one of Fusion's powerful assets that we can just change the order of things if need be or go back and edit a feature. So let's hit F to enter fillet mode one more time and we're going to fillet this bottom edge. And order matters in Fusion Z60 guys. Like I mentioned earlier, if I would have did this after, I would have got some messy things. So let's go to create pipe. And I want to select this edge here. And let's change this pipe size. I want to make this a lot bigger because this is going to be in the center. So let's change the operation to new body. And let's hit OK. And in the layer, we can right click and move this. So let's go to set pivot. And let's reference this front face here. And we'll check pivot once again. Now we can just adjust this to slide down this axis. We want it to be in the center and that looks good here. So we'll hit OK. Now let's go to combine and choose our main body and the pipe. Change it from join to cut. And let's hit OK. Now we can dial back forward on the timeline and you see it's not destructive. And this is so powerful, guys. It's one of uh, Fusion 360's uh, most powerful, you know, tools. So let's move this and let's change the pivot so we can reference this axis. Now let's just make this more in the center because it doesn't really make sense to uh, have it rotate there or make it look like it's been manufactured that way. So we'll move it in the center somewhere up here where it collides through this other body and let's hit OK. And for this next step, we can go about this in many ways, but I think I'd do a chamfer, which we could do a draft, but we'll do a chamfer for now. So we'll go to modify, chamfer, and we'll just select these edges here and just dial this in. And this is just adding some advancement to it, make it add a little bit more complexity. Um, so it's just not so flat and it looks manufactured. So let's hit F to enter fillet mode and let's round off these back edges. Let's hit OK. Now what I want to do is uh, add some detail to this little cylinder. So we're going to create pipe. And we'll choose this rounded edge here. And the size is pretty good. I think I like this size. So we'll just change the operation from cut to new body. 
and then we're gonna go to the bodies layer, right click and go to move. And let's go to set pivot and let's reference this face here. Let's uncheck that. Now we can slide this back here and that looks great. Now let's make a copy. So we're gonna go to control C, control V on the body layer and let's go to set pivot and let's just, you know, use that face and we can slide this on this axis. You guys can go back if I'm going too fast. This will become second nature to you guys, so just keep that in mind. Let's hit OK. Now we can go to Combine, select the cylinder. Now we'll select the two rings here and cut those out. And we can even chamfer or fillet these uh, edges here. So whichever you guys want to do, you can do. Well, let's hit OK. That looks good.